A couple of years ago, I went to a rehab in South California for alcohol and drug addictions. My family and friends were beginning to worry about me a lot, so if anything, I did it more for them than for me. I was there for almost four months. We all got pretty close. However, tragedy struck and my roommate decided to hit the needle again. Needless to say, that was the last time he ever would, as he overdosed in his apartment, collapsed in his closet with a needle still in his arm. This is where some friends and I found him, motionless. We called 911 immediately, but it was too late. A few weeks passed, and we are still living in the same apartment that he passed away in. Being sober, and not really knowing what sober people do with their time and lives all day, we did a bunch of random shit to keep our minds off our old habits. On this one specific night, we decided to use a Ouija board. We all sat in the living room and began. We said the prayer, put our hands on the planchette, and started asking routine questions and got nothing. We were about to quit when someone had the brilliant idea of going into our friend's room that passed away. Sitting in the room, we pulled everything out redid the procedure and asked for, let's call him Brad. We then asked, Brad, are you still with us? Surprisingly, the planchette went to yes. Both a little freaked out and a little excited, we continued. We then asked simple things like if he was okay, etc. Everything was fine until we asked Brad why he did it. The planchette then went to B-A-D-G-N-E. We thought about this for a while and asked, is Brad gone? The planchette then started moving like I've never seen it move before. Z, O, Z, O, Z, O. Over and over again. I had no clue what the fuck this was, but I turned to my friend and his face was white. When the planchette finally came to a rest, I asked my friend what was wrong. We need to quit. We need to stop this right now. Being a huge tough guy, it was strange to see him so scared. Stop being a pussy, I jokingly said. That's Zozo, a Ouija board demon. He acts to be a friend or family member and then finally reveals himself. I took this in and kind of chuckled to myself. That friend took off and went back to his apartment while the two of us stayed laughing at the demon and cussing him out. We finally asked what he wanted, and the planchette pointed right at me. Terrified, I asked, what do you want with me? It then started moving to the letters H-E-L-L. -L. You want me in hell? It then moved towards yes. Are you going to kill me? The planchette stayed at yes. Getting a little freaked out, I asked, how are you going to kill me? It then started moving towards F-I-R-E. And then out of nowhere, the planchette shot towards one of our candles, knocking it onto the floor, starting a small fire on the carpet. We quickly put it out, and as we were doing so, we looked back at the Ouija board, terrified. We picked up the planchette and walked back to the board and said goodbye. And then we went outside to burn that board that same night. I refused to sleep in that apartment after that night, and I ended up relapsing after going back home. So I beg you, don't ever play with a Ouija board. And Zozo, I hope we never meet again. So I never had a Ouija board experience because I was always told to never play with them. But recently, I was at the mall looking for a game called What Do You Meme? As I was looking at the games, I noticed that there were Ouija boards right there with the rest of the games. When out of nowhere, one of the workers comes up to me and says, Hey, you want a Ouija board? I'll give you 50% off. He seemed very adamant, like your typical salesperson, but something about him just didn't seem right. 
I don't even know where he came from. It seemed like he just popped up out of nowhere. But he was wearing a worker's uniform, so I assumed he worked there. I responded with, no thanks, I'm not looking for a Ouija board. And then he just walks away to the back room. I thought it was weird though, because I was looking at the board games. And the Ouija boards were about 3-4 feet away from me. And to finish it off, the Ouija boards were like 30 plus. And I didn't see a 50% off sign anywhere. The whole situation was weird. I mean, I did have enough money if they were 50% off. But still, I wasn't looking for a Ouija board. I needed this what do you mean game to play with my family. As I got the game that I was looking for, I went to the cashier to check out, and as I was walking out the store, I didn't see that employee that had told me about the 50% off. I turned back, and I saw him. He was just standing at the back of the store, looking at me, in a real creepy way. Once I got home, I told my family about the whole situation at the store. And a few of them said that it was most likely the devil or a demon trying to get me to buy it. It's weird, I know, but I wanted to share this story with everyone to see what everyone thinks about this. And what you would have done in this situation. This story happened on October of 2004, back when I was still a third year high school student. My friends and I stuck around the school late at night after having our annual Halloween party. We had agreed to try out my friend's Ouija board. It wasn't the brightest idea, but we needed a thrill. We found a nice spot under a huge tree and proceeded with our half-assed ritual. It was a total of five of us, two boys and three girls, and we were expecting some kind of paranormal contact. Rumors had it that our school was haunted, but we never really experienced anything firsthand, and it was Halloween when all the spirits came out to play, so we all wanted to get spooked. Also, we never seen a Ouija board firsthand before, so we were pretty excited. Our school was an old Spanish colonial house, built in the 1800s when the Spaniards still occupied the Philippines. We were in a section of the school that doesn't get used often, located beside a creepy old Jesuit house. People only go there when they needed to use the restroom, store equipment on one of the sheds, or make out with their boyfriend or girlfriends. We sat down in the middle of an open space with only an exposed light nearby illuminating the surroundings. We were all having a laugh, scaring each other with what-if scenarios. It was your typical dumb kids doing dumb things. My friend who brought the Ouija board then placed it in the middle of our circle. If I remember correctly, it was the -the glow-in-the-dark one, which we found hilarious. But it gave us the chance to see what was in the dark. Not knowing what to do and going after what we seen in the movies, we all then began to place our index finger. We sat there looking at each other until one of us said, um, okay, what's next? We didn't know if there was a proper way to start the ritual. Plus, the board didn't come with instructions, so we decided to just throw in a question. Is anyone there? I called out into the darkness. If... There are spirits living here. Please talk to us. One of the girls joined in. We obviously had no idea what we were doing. Still, nothing. Not even the slightest bit of wind. One of my friends jerked the planchette and the girl who brought the Ouija board screamed, breaking the silence. We all laughed at how ridiculous it was. After a bit of joking around, we decided to give it another chance. We all placed our index fingers on the planchette once more and asked if there's anyone there we would like to make contact. Don't break the circle, one of my friends jokingly said. Shut up, I whispered. We were just about ready to give up when the wind started to pick up. The stillness broke and the darkness around us seemed to move. 
Just a coincidence, we thought. Okay, but don't break the circle, I told everybody. Is anyone there? I was actually pretty excited. It was like a scene from a movie with dirt and leaves swirling around us. Guys, I'm scared, my friend sitting beside me said. My mom warned me about playing with forces we don't know. Did you die here? Were you killed during the war? Are you the headless priest? Do you know Jose Rizal? Are you a hottie? My friend giggled. At this point, we were all throwing random stupid questions, but nothing. This is bullshit. I don't want to do this anymore, my friend said. We were all thinking the same as well. Just then, a group of dogs from the neighboring house started barking at us through the chain link fence. These six dogs were growling and showing teeth. We all screamed and without finishing the ritual, ran right out of there. We didn't see each other until after Halloween break, and this is where the story gets creepy. One of the girls told us about an experience she had the night after playing with the Ouija board. She said she got home late after hanging out with her friends from the neighborhood when she realized she forgot the keys to her house. So she called her brother up, who was then still sharing a room with her, and what he said creeped her out. He told her that she was already home. He claimed to have seen her walk in a while ago and that she looked really tired and saw her head straight to bed. Creepy, but no need to freak ourselves out was what we thought at least. Besides, her brother must have been tired and seeing things. But then my other friend started telling us about an encounter she had that Halloween night. She said she was going up her room when the lights started flickering as she was ascending the staircase. Typical horror movie visuals. After this, she said she saw the door to her room open and a dark figure stepped out and stood atop of their staircase. She couldn't make out the face of the figure, but she said that she couldn't move and she felt a horrible dread as the figure stared down at her. No way, my best friend who just joined the conversation said in disbelief. Something happened to me as well. He recalled that he was sleeping one night when he woke up feeling really uncomfortable. He described his vision as having TV-like static and a feeling of heaviness surrounded him. He looked around the room and that's when he saw a bloody, charred face with red eyes grinning at him through the window. I couldn't believe what I was hearing because, in reality, I had an almost run-in with something that night as well. After the ritual, I was sleeping in our sedan on the way home after fooling around with the Ouija board when I felt our car jerk. I woke up instantly. Looking out the window, I found out that we had been hit by a huge oil tanker. I panicked and leaped out of the car. But lucky for me, my mom and I survived the crash since the front of the car was a total wreck. I still don't have an explanation why those things happened to us, but thank God nothing happened after that. And ever since that day, I have never played or gone near a Ouija board ever since. Most people when they tell stories of Ouija boards, it's when something terrible happens, like a demon possessing a friend, or somehow a ghost begins to haunt someone's home. Yet my story is kinda different. I'll start off with saying that this happened when I was in ninth grade. My friend had gotten a Ouija board for her birthday from her cousin, and my friends and I were dying to play. We told our friend, who I'll name Catherine for the sake of the story, to wait until we all got together to play the board. Our parents then drove us over to Catherine's house on a Friday after school so we could hang out and spend the night. None of us told our parents about what we were planning to do since all of us came from strict religious backgrounds. We ate dinner and we also got in our pool, then got out the rules for the board and we set everything up. The door had been shut, the ceiling fan was turned on full speed to drown out our questions. And we were all excited about what we were about to experience. There were four of us there including me, Catherine, Jackie, and Beth. 
We sat in a tight circle around the board, and we all nervously set our hands on the planchette. Beth greeted the spirit who owned the board once we touched it, and we all started giggling. None of us really believed in spirits, so we weren't too worried about the planchette, quote, moving, or something in the room breaking. The first question was asked by Jackie, who asked if there was anyone there. The planchette didn't move, and again my friends and I started laughing. Catherine then asked the question, what is your name? Suddenly, the planchette started sliding across the board. We were all freaked out, and Jackie even screamed. Catherine started asking who was moving the piece. She got kind of angry and started watching the planchette with disgust on her face. M. A. R. T. H. A. B. A. N. K. S. Suddenly, we turned to see Catherine shocked, and a horrified look was painted on her face. Beth started laughing and asked how we came up with a name that quick. Following with the question, how old were you? Six, one. Jackie and I noticed that Catherine had started to cry, very silently, but she was close to sobbing, big tears falling down her face. How are you today? She asked through tears. Beth had now noticed Catherine's sadness too. I asked her what was going on and why she was so sad, but she didn't answer. G-O-O-D. Catherine laughed a little bit, then asked if heaven was nice. All four of us stared at the board, unmoving our hands from the piece. The planchette slowly spelled out, I-T-S-B-E-A-U-T-I-F-U-L. Catherine quickly said goodbye without any of our consent, before removing her hands from the piece, pulling ours away with hers. The rest of the night she didn't speak of the incident, no matter how many times we asked. Years later, when I was in 12th grade, I had called her up after not speaking to her in a while. I was still friends with Beth, and I had gotten way out of touch with Jackie. I still spoke with Catherine, but not as often as I used to. She had moved away, and she wasn't available to call much. So I finally got her attention one day and brought up the night where we played her Ouija board and asked if she still had the board. She told me that she had asked her mom to sell it since it was taking up space in their storage closet. Yet, Catherine sent another text that got me very curious. Oh, wait, was that the day I got super upset? I texted back to confirm her question and asked her why she was so sad. I now know that Martha Banks was her grandmother who got a stroke when she was 53, another when she was 57, and the last one when she was 61, which killed her in a couple of days. I know it's a very touchy subject, but Catherine has said that she was almost certain that it was her grandmother. One of the reasons being that a couple of days after all of us had come over, she walked out to the kitchen to get a snack and saw that a picture had fallen down in the living room. When she went to go pick it up, she noticed that all of the pictures that were originally in the room were still there and that the picture didn't have a frame. She then told me that as soon as she picked up the picture, tears poured from her face. The picture was one of her and her grandmother when she was a little baby. She had never seen it before. This memory always makes me go on the side of Ouija boards when someone says that you shouldn't play. Of course, there are dangers, but taking a risk can allow you to learn a lot of things. And this memory for Catherine, I think, will allow her to remember that her grandma is safe and happy for all of her days. <laughs>